Right now, a pedestrian and cycling bridge is planned to be built over University Avenue to the delight of the biking community. Also, Governor Evers starts off Pride Month with an emotional speech and the raising of the progress pride flag over the state capitol. And later, we're entering the most dangerous time of the year for teen drivers. We'll share some of the data behind this phenomenon. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. If you've driven down University Avenue as of late, you've no doubt seen the construction making a bit of a mess of the area's traffic. Tahalil Mohadeen joins us now to share the reason behind that construction and how much longer it's expected to last. Tahalil? Eric and Charlotte, even before the orange cones and lane closures, that strip of road had its share of chaos. Now, to the delight of many, city leaders are doing something about it. I mean, university is a main corridor, and it's just terrifying to bike along. With the signs of what's coming clear, the soon-to-be-finished bridge off University Avenue is getting people's attention. I think any bicycle infrastructure that we can put in place is going to be good. As early as mid-July, this section of University Bay Drive will be home to a new $2.8 million pedestrian and bike bridge. It became apparent that there's a lot going on at that intersection. The new bridge is a part of a larger, roughly $26 million redesign of University Ave from Sherwood Boulevard to University Bay Drive. With UW Hospital and campus, railroad tracks, and several businesses all nearby, city engineers targeted the intersection to address safety concerns and clear out some of the congestion. We heard a lot of great feedback on the bridge when we proposed it, and uh, we're hoping it's going to be a, a big improvement. And while many Madison cyclists are celebrating the bridge, they also believe there's more to be done. Once you get west of Whitney Way, in Madison, it just it just gets really hard to bike. They say they know not every fix will end in a multi-million dollar bridge, but they would like to see similar changes on Broom Street and North Shore Drive, or between Broom Street and Blair. Madison used to top the list of most bike-friendly cities in the country, and, and now we have trouble even cracking the top five. As for city leaders, they say they first got to consider funding. Uh, they're open to the idea. It's certainly not our first bridge that we've done, a ped bike bridge, and uh, I'm sure it won't be the last. The University Avenue construction project is a joint effort between the city of Madison and village of Shorewood Hills. It's expected to be fully completed this October. Tahlil, thank you. The Madison School District says it'll work to repair relationships internally and in the community. This after allegations of bullying and retaliation in its communication department were revealed in court documents late last week. The documents included a complaint against MMSD communications director Tim Lamans, with employees accusing him of harassment and name-calling including insulting local media reporters and other public information officers in the city. Now, in a statement released by communications manager Ian Folger, MMSD says, quote, the information shared publicly last week was difficult for all individuals mentioned in the documents as well as for those who interact with them. It is abundantly clear that there are relational problems within the district's communications department that need to be addressed, end quote. Time now to check your first one forecast. Here's Julian Seawright. Julian? Well, now things have dried up for us here in Madison, but much of southern Wisconsin is starting to really feel that warmth come back and some of those showers starting to dwindle off as well. But let's talk about how much rain we really did need. We've been into a dry spell over the last several days. And even as of right now, our recent drought monitor is really encompassing almost all of Wisconsin to being dry, which is just the level one of severity for it, which is rather good. But hopefully with the spell of rain that we have had over the last several hours and even some of the storms, though they weren't very widespread, for many isolated areas would help out just a bit. Now we are still expecting to have just a few isolated showers and some storms, especially just southeast of Dane County for the next couple of hours. But those will really dry out once we get into the rest of tonight, heading into our Thursday overnight hours. Otherwise, we did see from our radar estimates over the last 24 hours, a little bit over an inch around Madison in areas near Monroe and just east of Janesville, even around two inches of rainfall over the last 24 hours. So some isolated areas really did get a nice heavy downpour, which helped with things, but also really cooled things down for us as well. Our high today was around 89 degrees. It's 81 now, and we even hit 70s just about two hours ago, thanks to that rain that has swept its way through. Going to be a bit more milder as we head into tonight, but as of right now, around Dane County, still into the lower and middle 80s as we get closer to the rest of our evening hours. The temperature change has been pretty significant, but it's starting to warm back up for us. And as we head into our air quality advisories, that's going to stick around for areas like Dane County and areas to the east until 11 p.m. this evening. We'll take a look at what else we have in store because we may have another round of some heat and storms on tap. We'll talk about that in a few moments. Let's head in. Over to you. 
In recognition of the start of Pride Month, the Progress Pride flag is once again flying over the Capitol. Earlier today, Governor Evers held a flag-raising ceremony. That Progress Pride flag was raised for the first time in state history last year over the east wing of the building. The flag was created to symbolize inclusion of marginalized communities within the LGBTQ community. It was an emotional event for the governor. Raising the Pride flag today sends a message for all those who've only ever wanted to belong, who've had to find their own family, who've never owned known home. You belong here. You are family here. You are welcome here. The Progress Pride flag will not replace other flags that regularly fly over the state capitol building. The U.S. flag and Wisconsin state flag will continue flying the on the east wing flagpole above the Progress the Pride flag. A 61-year-old Baraboo man has been arrested in connection with the death of a Partyville man at a Richland County campground last week. First responders were called to a report of an unresponsive man at the Bunker Hill campground near Cazenobia May 25th. There, they found 54-year-old Corby Neef, dead of multiple gunshot wounds. Two people of interest were detained at the scene. The Baraboo man was later arrested on a tentative charge of first-degree reckless homicide. The other person was released. A man who shot at Madison police officers while trying to escape arrest early last year has now been sentenced to 35 years in prison. Singleton Smith Harston was found guilty of attempted homicide, one of a dozen charges filed against him. At trial, prosecutors argued the 24-year-old shot at two officers with the Madison police department while he tried to escape arrest after jumping off of an apartment balcony. After his release, Smith Harston will also face 20 years of extended supervision. Police in McFarland are asking for the public's help in finding a potential witness to a drive-by shooting on Memorial Day. It happened at the intersection of Highway 51 Stoughton Road and Larson Beach Road on Monday. Take a look. Police have identified this vehicle to be driven by a possible witness the person inside the vehicle is being described as a white male between 60 and 70 years old. Anyone who recognizes the vehicle or the description of the driver is asked to call the McFarland Police Department. U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin is pushing a bipartisan bill that would boost mental health resources for farmers. Senator Baldwin, along with Republican Senator Joni Ernst from Iowa, are introducing the Farmers First Act of 2023. It would reauthorize the Farm and Ranch Stress Assistance Network. The program expands hotlines, creates support groups, and trains people in rural areas to recognize signs of depression and anxiety in farmers. Funding would go through both the Stress Assistance Network and DATCAP. Well, the time between Memorial Day and Labor Day is filled with all sorts of summer activities for teenagers, but AAA says not all of it is safe. Yeah, Wisconsin sees an above average spike in teen driving deaths during the summer months. Our Catherine Merck joins us now in studio to share these statistics, Catherine. Eric and Charlotte, in Wisconsin, about 36% of traffic fatalities resulting from a crash involving a teen driver occur during this period, and that's compared to 31% nationally. Comes down to a couple of factors here. Distracted driving, speeding, and not wearing a seatbelt are some of the reasons. Research shows that the risk of a fatal crash increases in direct relation to the number of teenagers in a car. Having other passengers Passengers in the car can contribute to peer pressure and dangerous driving habits like speeding and aggressive driving. AAA says in these months where people are out enjoying the best thing summer has to offer, it can lead to more opportunities for crashes. This really is an issue that impacts everyone. It's not just something that is impacting you know, the teens and their families. It's everyone that's sharing the road with them. Uh, and that includes cyclists and pedestrians. There are other states surrounding Wisconsin that are also above the national average for teen driving deaths. For comparison, Minnesota and Illinois are also above average at 33 and 34 percent, respectively. Michigan has the same percentage as Wisconsin, with 36 percent as well. Catherine, thank you. It is time to vote for Best of Madison 2023. You have until the end of the month to vote for your favorite businesses, people, things to do, and much more. Just head to channel3000.com and look for this story on our homepage. Then scroll down to the bottom of the article, and you can click on each category to vote. All you'll need is a valid email address to register and make sure your votes are counted. You can only vote once per category, so make your votes count. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, how a nonprofit looks to help both canines and veterans with PTSD at the same time. Plus, a rare piece of military history visiting Truex Field for the weekend. How you can take a flight inside a B-25 bomber. We're back after this.
watching News 3 Now at 6. One of World War II's most iconic aircraft will be flying over the skies of Madison this weekend, and you could be a part of it. This B-25 bomber is on a national tour thanks in part to the EAA. Known as the Berlin Express, the bomber will be offering public rides tomorrow through Sunday. Flights will be available from 9 to 5. The aircraft is very rare. Only about 100 remain, and less than 20 of them still fly. Besides the noise, you know, you'll, you'll get to feel it shake a little bit, but that's just totally normal. Um, and it'll, it'll feel, uh, you know, you don't have the comforts of being in a commercial airline. You don't have air conditioning. <laughs> uh, the seat belts are totally different. The seats aren't as comfortable. But that's all part of it. You know, that's all experiencing the history that we're bringing over um, for everyone to see up close and personal. Flights can be reserved now via EAA's B-25 website at flythebeat25.org. Ground tours are also available. A nonprofit in Stevens Point is stepping up to help veterans struggling with PTSD with the help of Man's Best Friend. Since it was established last year, Little Charlotte Rescue has given half a dozen emotional support dogs to veterans in central Wisconsin. The animal rescue's main goal is to rehome dogs in need so that fewer pups are put down. It's a win-win. These dogs are finding homes um, and the veterans are finding companionship. So that that couldn't make us happier. It helps out a whole lot that like it helps me focus and have something to care about. It means a lot to me. And to make things a little easier for combat veterans with an accepted adoption application, Little Charlotte's waives the adoption fee. Still ahead, how a golf course in northern Wisconsin is planning to give the U.S. Senior Open a unique setting. Also, lawmakers on Capitol Hill hold a hearing to address daycare affordability and access. Find out how you can save on costs. Plus, more high temperatures for the rest of the week. Julian returns with your complete forecast when we come back. Watching News 3 Now at 6. The growing crisis surrounding daycare affordability and access in the U.S. playing out at a Senate committee hearing yesterday. Advocates urged lawmakers to take urgent action to help families struggling to find affordable options. And as lawmakers consider policy changes, what can parents do now to navigate soaring child care costs? Jen Sullivan shares some tips. Addressing the child care crisis in America. On Wednesday, a Senate committee hearing focusing on access and affordability. Broken and dysfunctional child care system. With advocates calling for changes to help struggling parents. Data from April's Consumer Price Index shows the cost of daycare or preschool has surged by 7% compared to the previous year. And while lawmakers weigh policy options, what can families do right now? What's getting impacted the most is increased debt for sure, and the inability to save enough for retirement. Personal finance expert Julie Alma Taveras has three tips to stretch your budgets. Tip one, explore alternative child care options. Traditional daycare centers and preschools can be costly. Taveras says consider home-based daycare providers or team up with other parents or family members. What we've done is really try to work a schedule that can allow everyone to chip in. Tip two, Utilize flexible spending accounts. Taveras recommends looking into dependent care assistance programs offered by employers. There are these uh, programs where you can put a portion of pre-tax dollars into an account that you can then use towards child care. And tip three, advocate for a flexible work schedule. I feel like especially women, we should be advocating for ourselves to be able to do those things, right? Men too, because men take care of children. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Spotty showers throughout the area. Julian's back now with your complete forecast. That's right. We did deal with some spotty showers, but of course it's coming from this warm and hot humid air that we've been dealing with over the last several days. We're going to start just a look at our high temperature t history over the last about several days, mainly for the last 12 days. You can see how we've been above average coming in just from the back end of May, even until now, where temperatures have been into the 80s and into the lower 90s. Now, it's summertime, folks. As long as we have humidity, some sunshine, and some heat, that instability is more than enough to give us some showers or even some quick thunderstorms that could sweep through the area. Now, outside of that, because of the heat, we also do have high levels of ozone from areas like Dane County and over towards the east and northern parts of Wisconsin. Now, in terms of the droughts, which has been an issue for us over the last several days because we have been 
on the more side of not seeing much in terms of rain. It's been dry, it's been hot, though we're not looking at super significant drought issues, which is good. We are still looking at dry conditions throughout much of southern Wisconsin. We're in so, so think of it as a level one out of five for us seeing any kind of drought issues as of right now. But we did have some storms that swept through much of the upper Midwest. And here's some storm clouds that came in from Sheridan that from uh, Austin Hamilton had given us the courtesy of bringing in this storm cloud that had moved its way into the eastern side of Iowa and of course, we had some of that rain and storms earlier this afternoon as well. Getting into tonight's, we could see a couple more showers or thunderstorms for some isolated areas, maybe even around Dane County. But overall, we're going to be staying dry as we continue throughout the rest of tonight. Now, we did see over the last about three to four hours just south of Madison, close to an inch and a half of rainfall. But you can see that not a lot of areas got a lot of rain. Instead, it was very isolated areas south of Platteville, just east of Monroe near Janesville is really where we were seeing a bit more of that rainfall that had moved its way through from any of those small clusters that had come earlier this afternoon. That's kind of been the theme for any kind of showers or storms that we've been dealing with over the last 24 hours and going into our Friday. So for the rest of tonight, it's going to be quiet. Waking up tomorrow, upper 60s, already going to be in the 80s by the time we get to the noon hour. Might even see a couple of showers starting to develop around noon. And then as we get into the rest of our afternoon hours, folks, we are looking for, again, spotty showers and thunderstorms throughout much of southern Wisconsin as temperatures peak into the lower 90s, especially around Madison. We are expected for Friday night to be once again on the quieter side, but folks just be prepared for another hot, humid, and again, potentially spotty showers or thunderstorm day for us. Not looking for much more in terms of rain accumulation, but again, those spotty areas could see some significant uh, rainfall for us as we get into the afternoon and evening hours. But otherwise, we are still into a dry trend, especially as we head into this weekend. Take a look at our first worn 10 day forecast. Temperatures will peak into the lower 90s for Saturday. We're staying humid throughout much of the weekend. Next week, though, we'll cool off just a bit from Tuesday, but then warm back up into the middle 80s by the time we get into next weekend. Julian, thank you. Wisconsin just four weeks away now from hosting the U.S. Senior Open. That's at Stevens Point at Century World this year. And over the next few days, tens of thousands of flowers will be added around the 16th hole and throughout the course. In addition to the 33,000 flowers at the 16th, an additional 10,000 will be planted throughout the grounds. This floral tradition has been a hallmark at Century World now for more than 40 years. It's really like any other course. Definitely none in the state. I don't know of any courses in the U.S. that have a golf hole with this number of flowers on it. No picture can really do it justice when you get there and you're just surrounded by that number of flowers. Um, you can smell, you know, all the different varieties. It's just a really unique experience for a golf course. It really is something to see. Heidi Heath Farms has been in charge of that task for 10 years. Planting and seeding started in greenhouses back in December, also in January. It'll take three days for their team of 15 to complete that 16th hole. And coming up in sports, Hillary Knight earned, added another award to her trophy case. The latest the former Badger earned on the ice. Well, that's next on News 3 Now. When it comes to the world stage, Hillary Knight is the face of Team USA. And the former Badger put on a show on the ice during the 2023 Women's World Championship, tallying 12 points, eight of those goals, including three in the gold medal game against Canada. And for that, Knight has been named the International Ice Hockey Federation Female Player of the Year. Teammate and current Badger Caroline Harvey finished second in the voting. The Marshall softball team season ended two wins away from the state tournament, but what a run it was this year for the Cardinals. They were conference champs, regional champs, and more importantly to Aaron Young, they played for each other. At the start of the season, Marshall softball had a hunch. No, I think we definitely felt it deep down, like we got something going this year for us. And they were right. Not every year do you feel that quote unquote family feel, right. um, but the years that you do, you know it's really special. This would be one of those years. The Cardinals followed up a Capital South championship with their first regional title since 2018. The talk! If we are going to make a run at something this year, we need to have each other's backs. So this entire season, we've always emphasized picking each other up and always being there for each other. Ready? And they did it. Let's rock and roll. By listening to Aaron Young's mantra. Adam, baby! 
yeah. of playing for each other. To hold us together and to just be like, hey, remember, we all have each other's backs. Remember, each of us are there for each other. It's a really mental sport, and it's hard to, like, keep your head up sometimes. And it's really easy to get down on yourself, and I think that's a really good model to have. And not just for the game of softball. If someone's going through a hard time, you just have to be there for them. And I think that's what softball teaches you. It just teaches you to be there. It's a life skill, you know? Um, there's ups and downs to life, and, and if they can learn that here on the field, being a better person, then all the more power to all of us. One, two, three, Marshall! Brewers also lost today. We'll have the low lights tonight at 10. <laughs> <laughs> Final check, Julian? You know, it's going to be hot and steamy the next couple of days with an opportunity for some showers and storms tomorrow, but this weekend, just try to stay hydrated. All right, thanks for joining us for News Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.